comfort and safety of those around you. Remain seated during the presentation, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the theater. And please, supervise your children. Permanecer sentados, por favor. But we do ask that you deposit your trash in the bins provided as you leave the theater. As a courtesy to our presenters and everyone else in the theater, refrain from flash photography and turn off or silence your cell phones. Also, we ask that there be no texting during the presentation. The texting lamp is out. And now Stage 28 and Walt Disney Imagineering are pleased to present Voices of the Parks. Please welcome your host, Imagineer Brian Nevsky. Introducing them uh, vocally and hopefully visually if this works. So, ready? Yeah? Okay. Yeah? Okay. There we go. Teacher Brendan. Greetings aboard the Astro Arbiter. For your safety, intergalactic regulations require that you remain seated with your seatbelt fastened, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the rocket ship. And please, watch your children. Okay, wait, 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 it gets better. Come on, please. Good. Okay, okay, boys, take it easy, take it easy. Now we're ready to start. So, boys, I'll be right with you. <clears throat> Give me a little intro there, Gomer. Howdy, folks! Welcome to the one and only original country fair jamboree. Been flying. Just refrain from hibernating. Come on, and we'll all enjoy the show because we got a lot to deal with. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Brennan. Okay, here we go. 
Hi there! It's your friend, Timothy Mouse! As you know, Dumbo is a real high flyer. So as to make your flight a safe one, be sure to stay seated with your seatbelt fast, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside. And for all you scrub-up types, be sure to watch your kids. Chris Edgerly! Hola, para su seguridad permanezca sentado y mantenga sus manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del vehículo. Cuida a los pequeñitos, esté alerta, quizás vea al conejo blanco. So Corey Bird, if you notice there's an empty chair, because Corey got lost coming to Disneyland. Uh, which is ironic, considering how many voices he does for the part. He will be coming eventually, but I thought, until he gets here, I was going to play what I was going to play for him. So here's Corey. Twas a long time ago, longer now than it seems, in a place that perhaps you've seen in your dreams. For the story that you are about to be told began with the holiday worlds of old. I know you're curious to see what's inside. It's what happens when two holidays collide. All right, applause for extension. It's like he's there. Okay, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, later today, we're delighted to present the Pixar Play Parade, starring all your favorite Disney Pixar pals. Come join us along the parade route later today and help us count down to fun. Come on, this present our music in motion extravaganza, Mickey's Sensational Parade. Feel the energy and excitement as Mickey Mouse and a score of Disney characters bring sensational rhythms to life. Be sure to join us later today for Mickey's Sensational Parade. Voices of the panel, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I can put the garage door open or away. I don't have to use it anymore. Thank God. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to introduce you to each one of them individually, and hopefully we'll have some time for them to do a live read. It is similar to what um, Stephen just did, but something different. Um, I want to talk for a minute about Peter Renaday, who you just heard doing the bear from Country Bear Jamboree, and I'm with you, they should bring it back. Yeah. It's still in Florida, uh, so it does play. But um, Peter, can you tell me, because do we have a microphone over here? Hey, someone give me a mic. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think it's on. Uh, okay. So Peter, you are the one person on the panel who has actually met Walt Disney. Could you just tell me? Is that the story? Well, still, you started. You started. Tell us what year you started with. Tommy. I started uh, in 1959. Uh, <laughs> it was a very good year, and Walt was there, you know, for seven years. I was still working there, and uh, it was a different atmosphere, completely. Uh, we worked. I was in the art props department, and they'd send us to Disneyland to do touch-up paint work and do signs, and this was long before I got into the voiceover end of things. But uh, I was saying to my niece coming over here, yeah, we used to say, oh, we better get started. Better leave about 9.30 when there's no traffic to get to Disneyland from Burbank. <laughs> Doesn't apply anymore, does it? 
<laughs> but it was uh, it was exciting being there. In fact, strangely enough, ironically enough, the first person that I saw the day I was hired, I thought, well, someday I may actually get to see Walt Disney. And I walked into the animation building and there he was, coming out. And I've been told, oh, we call him Walt. And I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do that. I, it's a good warning. And he said, oh, no. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was it was something special in those days. Yeah. Oh, that's been... Can you tell me how did you get the job on Country Bear? How did that come about? Country Bear. Well, uh, <laughs> I was part of a group at the studio called the Disney Players, and we did one play in the theater every year, with the proceeds going to the John Tracy Clinic, which was one of Walt's favorite charities. And uh, they saw me in the plays, and somebody got the idea, oh, I guess we could use this guy for something here and there. And they started doing little voiceover things for me, little narration jobs, uh, then some for the park. Uh, I did Mark Twain for the Mark Twain Bolt, and then, uh, what else? Well, Country Bear, of course. Later on, Lincoln, <coughs> for the Hall of Presidents. But the voice of the things kept coming in, and uh, finally I decided, wait a minute, I can make a living doing this, can't I? <laughs> so that's how I got started with the Disney players. Wow, fantastic. Thank you, Peter. Mm -hmm. Now, DJ, DJ Ward, right next to Peter over there. I have to tell you that, you know, when I was going through the files and finding out how many different attractions these people have been on, every other file was B.J. Ward, B.J. Ward, B.J. Ward, B.J. Ward. B.J., you've done a lot of attractions, and I was so thrilled to bring the, the, the Burroughs Rabbit from Splash Mountain. I mean, that's like, to me, very, very Disney, and I was so thrilled that that's you. Yeah, I, I had never heard any of that, because when you do recording sessions, you just do it, they don't play it back for you. So. I know I did some singing possums, you did and right, rabbits, possums. and a couple of other things. Yeah, you're also a kitchen cabaret for Epcot. I mean, you've done oh, a lot right. of singing. How did you get involved with working for Disney to start with? I think I just had an audition many years ago when I first started, and I just had a, a very high, light voice. My voice was kind of like, hi, welcome to Denny's. That was kind of where my voice was pitched. So I only did one thing, hi, welcome to Denny's. And they had me read for something, and it was sort of, Hi, welcome to the Magic Kingdom, and it was that smiley, nice Disney sound. And I, I'd worked for several of the composers, uh, the Sherman Brothers, who wrote It's a Small World, and the Carousel of Progress thing I'd sung for them. And um, I had some of George Wilkins, who wrote a lot of things here. And then I did some singing for Euro Disney in French, which was... My apologies to the French people <laughs> right now. And by the way, I have to tell you, she has got an enormously powerfully wonderful voice. You did stand-up opera, which was your one-woman show for a long time. The, the thing about working for us is that, obviously, it, that is not the thing you do all the time. No, but that's what I like about working with voiceover people, because we all kind of come from different walks of the business. Some people come from radio, some people uh, come from improv, some are actors, some are, um, and some people have other jobs, like they're biologists, and I mean, I just find it's an interesting group of people. Right. Yeah. Um, well, we so are, I've always been very happy to be called in to do anything. <laughs> we're, we're delighted to have you. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming to the <laughs> Sitting next to, to BJ is Stephen Stanton, who's Audio did not work. Sorry about that, Stephen. I know. Yeah, imagine yours. I don't know. I didn't do it on purpose. Keep your arms and um, all of you <laughs> have stopped. Uh, Stephen is, is a wonderful VO artist. One voice he does particularly well is the voice of Rex Allen. And if you've heard our carousel of our uh, imaginary entryway two years ago, uh, that was uh, Stephen doing the voice of Rex Allen. I have to ask you, because that's such a iconic Disney voice. Was that one that just came naturally, or did you develop it after watching Disney movies all the years? Or? Well, I grew up in a uh, part of Florida called Tampa, and uh, very close to Walt Disney World, so I think people talk a little bit like that down in that area, like I'm doing right now, although I don't really talk like that. 
very much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was uh, and watching all the old uh, the nature films back in the day. The hound that thought he was a raccoon, and Charlie the lonesome cougar, and uh, uh, Beaver, whatever. I don't know. Beaver meets the cougar, and I don't know. There's all kinds of those things. <laughs> mash up there, but uh, yeah, so it came, it came a little bit natural just from living in that part of the country. And by the way, Stephen is the voice of the Mark Twain Streamboat, taken over from Pete. He's now the voice of Steve Stanton. I'm hoping everybody doesn't fall overboard, no smoking or fires on the deck, and all those rules on there. That's right, anybody falling in. That's right. How did you get your start in voiceover, Stephen? Boy, that's a long... Uh... <laughs> Tell us the 30-second version. <laughs> I started just by, uh, I think I really got involved in doing voiceover just by, you know, listening to cartoons as a kid and imitating all the voices and then uh, working, you know, in animation studios and trying to, well, volunteering anytime they needed a scratch track, which is a, a temporary track, you know, when they're going to lay something down later. And it just kind of evolved into that. Wow, that's great. Well, thank you. Good to have you. Fabio Rodriguez. Yes, sir. So Fabio, as you as you heard from him, he is the voice of the Haunted Mansion. That was partially because Corey Burns walked in. Hang on one second. We'll let you get situated. Have your fan sit down. Oh, there. There you go. So Fabio, talk, talk, I want to talk to you about Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean because you do voices in both of those. Oh, uh, yes, it was a pleasure. Actually, I, I need to say something first, and that is that uh, uh, my uh, the reason why I started with Disney is because of the gentleman on the left, Mr. Bill Rogers. He, he discovered me. Uh, I, was, uh, I was working at a, on an industrial video for uh, Xerox, and then uh, when I finished, he was on the next door, uh, he has a studio up there, and he says, uh, I heard your voice uh, doing that thing, wouldn't you like to audition for a for a Disney uh, voice inside the park? And I said, are you kidding me? I got no. So I go, you bet. And I did, then I got it. So uh, what was the other question? Well, no, <laughs> I just wanted to. I just wanted to say that because he's not only my dear friend for at least 20 some years, well, a long time, but uh, but also, he's, he started actually. Well, he's amazing. I, I wanted, the question was about the, doing uh, Haunted Mansion and Pirates, but you were telling me a story about when you actually heard yourself for the first time in the park. Well, yeah, that, again, it involves Mr. Rogers, because when I, my dream when I came from, to this country was to visit Disneyland. And uh, I finally realized my dream in 1972. I was standing by myself on Main Street and there was a castle, and then at 9 o'clock, I, I heard a voice in English say, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just 50 minutes, and I go like, holy moly, I love that voice. Someday, I'm going to be standing in the same place, and I'm going to be listening to that announcement, but in my voice in Spanish. That was my dream, and that was my goal. And, and here's the picture. Exactly 30 years to the almost to the day in 2002, I was standing in the same place, but this time with my wife and my uh, youngest son Alexander. We're standing in the same place, and then we heard uh, Mr. Rogers first, and then I came, damas y caballeros, niños y niñas, and dentro de 15 minutos, and then my son Alexander, who is here, he goes, Dad, that's you, and then and then I go, yeah, and then a lot of people were. Is that really you? And I go, yeah, and I go, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, like, 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 that was, like that was would say, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> so that's the story. So it was my uh, dream that became a reality. Wow. And I'm still in the park. Thank God. I and hope I will speak. And we're lucky thank to you. have you, Fabio. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really yes. Well, anybody want a microphone? No, no, Mark. Mark has his own. Has that? Hello. Good. So Mark Silverman, right there in the center, the voice of Rod Serling. Thank you. Thank you. He 
know, Mark, uh, when did you, I have to ask you this, did you start off life sounding like Mark, uh, Rod Sterling, Sterling, Rod Sterling, Rod Sterling, or is it just something you developed? I did not. It, it was actually, um, a, it was sort of similar to my voice. It wasn't much of a stretch where I can just kind of go into it like this for my new voice. And it seems to come in handy all the time. <laughs> It comes in handy most, I, I, listen, I, after doing this Rod Serling and Tower of Terror, everywhere I go, it just seems to happen. I, I like to go to Target and go to the, in the elevator, <laughs> those elevator doors <laughs> and We went to a symphony of the twins. People in the elevator, they, they really don't know what to make of it. They, some of them, they don't want to look, they don't know. But, <laughs> It makes, uh, it brings a little bit of Disney magic into everyone's life, just shopping at Target, that's right. But I, I never really did the Rod Sterling voice, but as a kid, I just, I watched a lot of TV, and I would, I was obsessed with TV and tape recorders. And I would take, everything I would tape, I would just walk around the house, just like at 10 years old, going, Leave it to Beaver, starring Barbara Billingsley, Hugh Beaumont, Tony Dunn, and Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. Would you believe I'm Maxwell Sporting Jimmy Disney. Just everything I heard, I wanted to talk like, and I, I didn't know why. I just thought it might be fun someday. So I started imitating my teachers, which they didn't like. But I thought it was, everyone likes it except the teacher. That's what I thought was funny. And I just got into voiceover from that. Yeah. Now, uh, Chris Etherly, who was the voice of Timothy Mouse, who just heard it a moment ago. Hey, Chris. Hello, Brian. Hello. <laughs> and a baby on the way. Congratulations. Thank you. My five, wife's doing five, hard work. Well, five days. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you end up getting into these kind of voices? Because you do such specific Disney voices. Right. Um, when I was growing up, I would go to the Hollywood Tower of Terror in uh, Orlando, and I would hear that that Rod Serling, and I would think, one day I'm going to grow up and I'm going to do the voice on that ride, and, <laughs> and that job went to Mark Silverman, so, uh, <laughs> fine, I'll do Timothy, great, I'll do him instead, so, yeah. Oh, and, no, yeah, I, I was a stand-up comic for years, and I, like Mark, I would do voices as a kid and make my friends laugh, and, you know, anything to get you out of uh, real work, you know, and just... And I gravitated into stand-up comedy. I did the road for about ten years, and uh, I finally, I, I uh, Pat Brady, my agent, and one of my agents, the reason I have a career. Yeah, she uh, she helped me get off uh, the road and just do voiceover full time. And um, uh, one of the first jobs I remember getting was uh, to be uh, Timothy. So replacing somebody from sixty years ago it was it was kind of surreal. Wow. Yeah, I didn't think that I'd be able to connect with that, and I did. Do you ever stand outside the attraction and just mouth the words? <laughs> Until the court asks me not to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah stop doing that. Yeah. Chris Edgerly, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, Yanni Alvarez, who is sitting next to Chris right over there. Oh, the yeah. Voice, yeah, I know. She's the voice of Alice in Wonderland, but I have to tell you, uh, I, I made a list of all the voices that she does. So. She does, uh, let's say, Flix Flyers, Alice in Wonderland, Tuck and Roll Driving Buggies, Jumpin' Jellyfish, The Parking Lot Trams, uh, The Tomorrowland Transit Authority in Florida, Studio Tram Tour in Florida, Gadget's Go Coaster, and It's a Small World. All one person. <laughs> so, Danny, how did you get your start in voiceover? Um, I think I'm a very lucky person. Um, I've, um, I've always been an actress and I love cartoons. When I was a little kid, I thought cartoons were real. Go figure. Um, and um, at one point, voiceover is a really large part of being an actor. And I wanted to get into animation, not only voiceover or radio commercials, but animations. And there was this casting director who was giving this phenomenal animation seminar at Walt Disney Imagineering. So it was a no-brainer for me. I was going to get to be trained with this phenomenal casting director, Andrea Romano. She's done tons of things. And, yay, somebody back there. And um, at Disney, and I walk in, we do everything, and 
Brian comes out and he says hello to everybody. In the meantime, my, um, my voiceover demo is playing in the background. And he looks at me and he says, um, that's great Spanish, you have a Disney voice. I didn't realize I had a Disney voice, but now I have a Disney voice. And he took my demo. From there, he called my agents and I auditioned. And the first time I walked into Walt Disney Imagineering, um, I remember, I hope I get into small world. I hope I get into small world. And I did. It was one of the first things I did about 12 years ago. Wow, so I'm responsible for your career. <laughs> and it was that. <laughs> yeah. I did something right, right? Okay, I'm gonna skip over Corey because I don't think you're interested in him. Okay. No? Oh, that would be too bad. Hey, Corey. No, hello. I was gonna skip over you, but I thought better of it. They're gonna come and get me. How are you doing today? Well, I'm all right. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. We would have we would have missed you had you not been here. Yes. For those well, they few... tried to stop me. Well, I had a fire I... on the freeway and uh, <laughs> closed off ramps and. Uh... Well, I, I did put out those those thumbtacks. I hoped you'd run over, but. <laughs> <laughs> So, Corey is another one, uh, and everybody on this panel, by the way, I mean, I could not be here without them, but Corey, uh, I'm just going to read you, I, I can't read you everything that Corey does on the market. There's not enough time, but I'm going to tell you that Corey does, uh, amongst other things, the uh, Mickey's Fun Wheel, Sim Silly Symphony Swings, It's Tough to Be a Bug, Great Moments from Mitchell Lincoln, Indianapolis 500 Motor Speedway, The Parking Lot Traps, Grizzly Gulf, Tokyo Disney Seas, Mickey and the, Dis and the Sorcerer's Map, Downtown Disney Water Park, Seven Doors, Mind Train, Mad Powder, Teacups, Fitch and Counter. I can't read them all, there's not enough time. And Corey is a one-man band here at Disney, and absolutely. <laughs> It's true, and your agent isn't here, so I can say that. She'll never hear that I actually think so highly of you. Corey, could you please tell me, how did you get your start in voiceover? Well, my very first job was uh, for Disney. It was a school slide film. They were looking for the voice of Hans Conry, who played Captain Hook for uh, Peter Pan film. But uh, Hans Conry was out of town. Now, the great voice actor Dawes Butler, who I happen to know, knew that I did a very good likeness of Hans Conrad's voice. He had me audition for this slide film, and uh, in, what was it, 74 or 70? Yes. I played Professor Plumwater <laughs> in Chef on the Lance Health Diet. <laughs> and now, you know, 40 years later, I'm still doing Hans Conrad's voice for uh, Jake and the Neverland Pirates. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I always wanted to be a voice actor, right? and especially because of Disneyland. And it was Paul Fries uh, who sort of <laughs> I've been a fan of his voice from uh, The Adventure Through Inner Space. And uh, then finally, when the Haunted Mansion opened, I walked in the door and heard that voice. I said, uh, okay, I have to meet this man, and I want to work with him. <laughs> I want to do that. And I set out to do it and never took no for an answer, even though I'm, uh, you know, uh, painfully... Uh, uh, shy and dyslexic and Asperger's. <laughs> well, you know, while you were out, we played a little clip from the Nightmare Before Christmas holiday overlay for Haunted Mansion. And uh, I think that he is a pretty darn good ghost host, don't you? <laughs> Everyone involved, and yeah. Brasili especially, and uh, well, you know, they just wove this illusion together with great engineering. Yeah. My well, little, my little simulation. Well, we've got it here only in California. Nobody else gets that one. It's ours, right? <laughs> so Camille Dixon is in. Oh, excuse me, Camille. Excuse, Camille Dixon. Uh, Mark will be right back. Yeah, the Twilight's on the drive, but Mark's on the drive, so he has to go do it live. <laughs> 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 
just locked the door. Uh, Camille Dixon at the other end of the panel. So, uh, Camille is most uh, the voices you hear at California Adventure. Can you tell me how did that end in your lap? Well, like Fabio, I need to thank Bill Rogers for that, but maybe for different reasons. Oh. Um, no, uh, Bill had, he, he and I had worked together starting about 10 or 12 years ago, we're not sure, and when they were looking for a voice to do a couple of other things, like fill in for the Performing Arts Showcase at the Hollywood Backlot stage, you know, the backup for the lady who was doing that, um, he suggested that they audition me, so I got the opportunity to do that. And then, as many of you know, for the last several years, Bill has also been the voice at Disney California Adventure. Then last year, about a week before the opening of Cars Land and Buena Vista Street, we had it on the calendar, expecting that Bill would be there for the press events. He gets a phone call saying, you know how we're opening Cars Land and Buena Vista Street next week? Yeah, yeah, I got it on the calendar, but you know, when do you need me? What time? Where should I be? What's Camille doing? <laughs> so in one phone call, he's been replaced. Oh. And he is now my assistant. <laughs> and he is also my loving husband, so he Ooh. could not be more supportive. <laughs> I have to thank him. Not many men could take that very well, but he was very excited. Wonderful. Thank you, Camille. <laughs> So Bill, what did we talk about? What did we talk about last time? We, how did you get started in this business? Thirteen years old, wanting to be a disc jockey, wanted to play that rock and roll music on the radio. <laughs> and when I found out that you could make commercials and play rock and roll music at the same time, I was hooked. That's all there was to it. And you know, it really has been a whole lot of fun. I think last year we talked about how I got this gig, and I will just very quickly relate it to you that a great friend of mine recommended me for the role, asked me to come in and audition under strange auspices. I didn't know I was auditioning for anything. Uh, the person who auditioned me for the role, after a couple of takes, said, we think you're going to be the right guy. And it was all over with. And I went, how did this happen? But it was all due to an incredibly good friend and uh, I have tried to pay it forward whenever possible. Which you apparently have. Thank you, Bill. So now, uh, if you remember last time, we had each one member of the panel read something live. So I thought we'd do it this time too. Hopefully we can make it all the way through. They're gonna kick me out of here at three o'clock. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce, uh, we're starting with our good friend Peter Renaday. Peter mentioned to you that he was the voice of Lincoln in the Hall of Presidents for many, many years. We only recently reverted back to our original uh, Lincoln voice, but I'd love to have Peter read a little bit of the Lincoln speech for you so you can hear it here live. Could you do that for me? And with a tribute to Royal Tango, my Lincoln wasn't a copy of Royals, by any means I couldn't do it, but it was certainly influenced by him because I admired his Lincoln so much. What constitutes the bulwark of our liberty and independence? It is not our frowning battlements, our bristling sea coasts, our army and navy. These are not our reliance against tyranny. Our reliance is in the love of liberty which God has planted in our bosoms. Our defense is in the spirit which prizes liberty as the heritage of all men, in all lands, everywhere. Destroy this spirit that you have planted the seeds of despotism around your own doors. At what point then is the approach of danger to be expected? I answer, if it ever meets us, it must spring from amongst us. If destruction be our lot, we ourselves must be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all times or die by suicide. Let us have faith 
that right makes might. And in that faith, let us to the end dare to do our duty as we understand it. So, uh, thank you so much, Peter. That was amazing. Um, so, B.J. Ward and Stephen Stanton are going to do something from Carousel of Progress. Uh, because B.J. is the voice of mother in Carousel of Progress, and Stephen does an amazing Rex Allen. So, we're going to let them do that right now. Yes, sir. We got everything we need to make life easier. <laughs> Say, Mother, I was reading about a fellow named Tom Edison who's working on an idea for snap-on electric lights. Electric lights? No more kerosene? No more smelly gas? <laughs> Sarah sure gets to the core of the apple. But we do have to take this new wash day marvel. Now it takes me only five hours to do the wash. Imagine, it used to take two days. That's right, folks. Now Sarah has time for other things like... Canning and cleaning the oven? Yes, dear. Ovens don't just clean themselves, you know. I know, dear. And they probably never will. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get the laundry off the line before it starts raining cats and dogs. <laughs> Now, don't worry, Rover, she didn't mean dogs. Besides, it's not going to rain today. My lumbago isn't acting up. I'm not going to say I told you so. Boy, look at it come down. All you have to do is put your wash on the line. Oh, well, the sister was low anyway. We should also bring that back to Disneyland, but I digress. Yeah, Fabio. Uh, uh, yes, so you have your. Uh, imagine this is. Yeah, it's you. It's for, uh, Fabio will now do a live reading from Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay. Here we go. Bienvenidos, marineros. Para su seguridad, permanezcan sentados con las manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del barco y cuide a los niños por orden del capitán. No se permite tomar fotos con flash durante el viaje. Y ahora, prepárense para zarpar. Mark Silverman and now do a reading from Tower of Terror. <laughs> A tiny snap on the needle of every watch. <laughs> the time is now, on an evening very much like the one we have just witnessed. Tonight's story of the Twilight Zone is so unique and calls for a different kind of introduction. This, as you may recognize, is a maintenance service elevator. Still in operation, waiting for you. We invite you, if you dare, to step aboard because in tonight's episode, you are the star. And this elevator travels directly to the Twilight Zone. So Stephen, other than playing the dog in our last sketch, which we really, and the rain, and that was pretty good. It took five words, guys. Somebody had to do that. Uh, Steve is also the voice of Scuttle in the Little Mermaid Trench. She will help you out. <laughs> like I said, the story all started when Ariel fell on head of a fence in the lock. Oh wait, it started when King Triton asked Sebastian to keep an eye on Ariel because she kept swimming up to the surface to get a look. That way, you, you know, that, now that I think about it, it really started when Ariel made a deal with Ursula and lost her voice at Whoa, this story getting away from me. <laughs> yeah. uh, and thank you. Uh, now again, the Alvarez, I told you, it does a whole lot of attractions for us, but my favorite is the parking lot tramps. I just can't hear that. Oh, yes. Would you do the parking lot tram live dramatically? Of course I would. Thank you. Para su seguridad, 
Por favor, permanezcan sentados con las puertas cerradas, manteniendo sus manos, brazos, pies y piernas adentro, mientras el tranvía esté en movimiento. Y vigilen a sus niños. Gracias. <laughs> These days, everything is last second. So I want you to know, he didn't know he was doing this. Corey is going to, in the Pirates of the Caribbean, you know the, the pirate that is the poop pirate that sits next to where uh, in the, there's a barrel of Jack Sparrow's coming out of it? Well, that's Corey. Corey, would you please do the poop pirate for us? All right. No mistake it be that coveted treasure map I hold. <laughs> Beaver, see to it that wretched Captain Jack Sparrow never lays eyes on it, eh? Nor this proper key, neither. <laughs> Tis right clever I be. Search all you care, Captain Jack Sparrow. You'll not find your wealth of treasure lest this here map be handy, nor likely breach that treasure room missing this very key. So, uh, <laughs> so, do you remember Electronica a couple of years ago in California Adventure? So, yeah, bring that. Okay, we'll do that too. You got it. Uh, so, I took Camille, well, we took Camille out of her Camille Dixon sweet voice, and she played the siren. So, she was now doing a reading as the siren from Toronto. Greetings, programs. Before our presentation begins, I'd like to remind you that since this is an exclusive sneak peek, audio and video recording of this experience are not permitted. In addition, there is no eating, drinking, or flash photography in the theater. If for any reason you need to leave the theater during the presentation, please go to the exit doors to your right, where a cast member will assist you. And now, programs. Please, put on your 3D glasses as Electronica presents our exclusive sneak peek of Tron Legacy. Now, I have to, I have to confess something to you. I, to find copy for Bill, he actually gave me something. And because I'm the kind of person I have, I didn't give him that to read. I found the hardest piece of copy I could find, and I handed it to him about uh, 10 minutes ago. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead, Bill. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few minutes, you will experience one of the most unique pageants presented anywhere in the world. The Main Street Electrical Parade. This sparkling fantasy recreates scenes from many of Walt Disney's most memorable film classics in over a half million colorful twinkling lights. Powered entirely by batteries, some of the brilliant parade units measure over 23 feet in height and over 100 feet in length, and together stretch for almost one quarter of a mile. Each parade unit sets its own musical atmosphere by interweaving synchronized, electronically synthesized, familiar Disney melodies with the continuous electrical parade theme in electrosynthematic musical sound. <laughs> I got four things I gotta bring back, okay. That was 
fantastic. I really thought I'd get you with that one, Bill. Well, we, we're almost ready to wrap it up, folks. We are going to have the panel downstairs in the talent roundup area afterwards, so it's to, don't rush us. I'm going to take them out that way. They're going to be down there starting at 3.30 for an hour if you want to come by and get autographs, pictures, or whatever. Um, I have nothing left to say to you people except you're fantastic, and I am blessed. Thank you.